stocks from the streets. Yeah, I guess I was thinking about, you know what I'm saying, talking about, I guess, cost versus interest. Maybe it's not cost versus interest. They kind of go hand in hand. But there's some basic things that everybody knows and everybody thinks about, but they don't always think about it, I think, the all the ways you should. Or at least I wasn't thinking about it like that. So I just wanted to talk about it. Okay, so I guess I was thinking about it like this. Um, you got like, you know, your interest that you gain from, you know, like your banks and credit cards and stuff like that to talk about that. But you also got interest in like fees. You got like the price of something cost and then how much you actually pay for it. You know what I'm saying? Those are two different things. So, you got like, let's say for example, your rent, for example, you got like bills. You got bills with late fees and you got bills without late fees. You know what I'm saying? So, your rent, you lay down your rent, more than likely you're going to have some type of late fee. Right? Let's say your rent's uh, $500 a month, but then you get like a late fee that's like $50 because you laid on your rent, right? That's like... 10% interest on your rent for you being late. And, you know, some spots, that might just be for the first week, you know what I'm saying? That just might go up, and it'd be another one. Then you're looking at, like, 20 and, you know what I'm saying, 30% of your interest and junk like that. So, essentially, you being late on your rent, you paying quite a bit of interest, you know. The same thing when people talk about, you know, if you pay a little bit extra on your car payment every, you know what I'm saying, month that you might actually be able to beat a year out of your uh, car payments, pay it off early and avoid a year's worth of interest and save money, you know what I'm saying. You hear people talk about stuff like that. Those things are, like, possible too, but... One way of just, like, avoiding junk is to avoid missing those bills with those late fees because sometimes you pay a nice amount of interest. Like, one thing I, you know, I always had a hard time with was stuff automatically coming out of my bank account. I'm one of them people that has to physically go and do that. I, it's hard for me to just manage it where it just comes out and I remember what day and all of it. It just never really worked that well for me. Like, I have to have little insignificant stuff come out. But, you know what I'm saying, the little insignificant stuff is probably, you know what I'm saying, part of the problem too because when I was sitting here thinking about it, it's like, you know what I'm saying, you mess around and, uh, you know what I'm saying, the automatic stuff would be like come out and, you know, I'm a gamer or whatever. You got like uh, your rent's due and you end up being $50 short on your rent and then you got to pay a late fee. But earlier that month, your uh, your Amazon Prime membership came out and, you know what I'm saying, you forgot about it or something and that automatically came out and it'd be like, oh, if it automatically came, if I didn't pay that and it didn't automatically come out and now I can't get it back, now I got to pay this uh, late fee, you know what I'm saying, on my rent. So now Amazon Prime just cost me like a hundred something dollars versus the actual 60 that it was supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? Or you can look at it, you pay more on your rent. But either way, it was like, because I paid that bill versus paying another bill, which is this is what we do when we broke, right? We got to rob Peter to pay Paul. You're going to be paying some bills and other bills might have to wait because you broke. That's how it is. You know what I'm saying? So you just had that automatically come out with your Netflix and all of that junk and then late on your rent so you know what I'm saying that was like you know what I'm saying something that might have happened to me and then I'd be like man I, I was just a few dollars short you know but it's gonna cost me and then I'd be like oh well I got the money next week but think about all the extra money you might be paying out or doing something like that just because you was missing something like that you know what I'm saying? But then you got, like, you know, people, you know what I'm saying? You tend to look at this junk when you look at your late fees, basically, on, on a level two. You're like, okay, this late fee is only $10. This one's only 40 You know what I'm saying? Or this one's so much when you do have late fees. You know what I'm saying? But it's, you know what I'm saying, a big part of, you know what I'm saying, I think, 
being broke and junk, you know what I'm saying? It's one thing, you know what I'm saying? We all out here broke. Nobody wants to be broke, but I'm going to be broke. I want to try to be good at that shit, right? Be good at being broke. You know what I'm saying? I want to try to make sure I do this in a way that is the most efficient way of being broke so I can be the best broke motherfucker so I can not be broke no more. Like, you know what I'm saying? I can get it out of that broke phase, you know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? Avoiding certain fees and different junk like that, thinking about late fees as a percentage of interest and that's the same thing as interest that you pay on other things, like you pay an interest on a dollar. You pay interest on your credit cards if you don't pay them off in time. You know what I'm saying? You pay interest on, you know what I'm saying, car payments and different stuff like that. If you think about that, how much extra money that is and what it's accumulating into then you might be able to figure out ways to get around that and then you'll actually be saving money on stuff that you're actually paying for. You know what I'm saying? And that seems like something that is really, you know what I'm saying, effective in helping me when I look at it. You know what I'm saying? Because I was like, okay, I can pay this, I can pay that. How much is it that I'm paying out actually... How bad is, you know what I'm saying? What type of ramifications is it going to have for me? And what type of interest am I paying on that? Like, you know what I'm saying? If you laid every month on your rent, the, the price that you're paying for, you, wherever you live in that, you probably could move and live somewhere better. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it might even be more beneficial when you add up the amount of money you're looking at. You might be like, wait a minute, you do that like four or five months or something, in a year, you done paid like a whole extra month's rent, you know what I'm saying, so, you know, try to avoid that junk, that's the type of money, if you can avoid that money, you can save that money, you know what I'm saying, like, maybe put it up, maybe do something with it, spend it on something else, you know what I'm saying, but, you know what I'm saying, paying stuff, paying more on stuff, paying stuff off early, all of those things are ways that, you know what I'm saying, you can be interest which saves on your actual cost that you're actually paying for it. You know what I'm saying? The same way when I was talking about banks and actually saving the money in there, you got to save more than what the actual money is. Uh, I guess I didn't bring up compound interest, but you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to save up more than what you're actually going to pay when you actually spend it. Because if you don't save it long enough, then you're not going to actually pay out. You're just going to always pay out extra when you actually buy something. Versus, you know what I'm saying, actually saving the money. Versus on the price that they tell you. Because the price ain't the actual price. You're always going to have to pay tax. Which is, you know what I'm saying, another form of interest. Which is another part of cost. You can't forget about that part. You know what I'm saying? You got, you know what I'm saying? You don't always know what that number is, but you have to know that it's always there, and you have to know to calculate it. Like, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to necessarily do math every time you go to McDonald's to know exactly what your interest is. Even though I mostly buy off the dollar menu, so I keep it legit. No, I mess with you, but uh, you know to know what it is. But you have to know that those things are like out there, and that's part of your actual cost. Like you know what I'm saying, like your phone, your cell phone. You got surcharges and fees and junk like that, and you know you might pay that late, and you have to pay a reconnect fee or something like that, and that's a percentage of you know what I'm saying what you paying, like a ten dollar connect fee on a forty dollar phone bill or something. Is you know what I'm saying interest wise pretty ridiculous you know what I'm saying to have for a phone or something like that you probably look at that stuff you know if you are paying something ridiculous like that then maybe you might want to change to some type of style or a company where you don't have to do that or that doesn't exist you know it also makes me uh, look at better options that I have too so that's that's what I gotta say about all that you know I... <laughs>